Get up, stand up, stand up for your right. Get up, stand up, stand up for your right. Get up, stand up, stand up for your right. Prohibition cannot be enforced for the simple reason that the majority of American people do not want it enforced and are resisting its enforcement. That being so, the orderly thing to do under our form of government is to abolish a law which cannot be enforced, a law which the people of the country do not want in force. Police officer, open the door. Come the grass. It's the fuzz. Who got down? What are we gonna do? Watch it. Small man, let's split. Are you putting me on? You mean I can see anything I want you put on this film? Yes. Then why is an alcohol made illegal? Got flowers and grass. Like you treat shit. Hangers and roses and liver. Besides, grass doesn't have it for me like alcohol is. Besides, that cigarettes are much worse. Right, man. That's don't worry, I got a cat right, man. There's nothing wrong with blowing grass. Yeah. Me, you're not going to use them anyway. Well, speak your mind, then. Okay, I will. No one has the right to tell me what I can do with my own body, what I can eat, drink, or smoke. This is a free country, and no one has the right to take away my constitutional right. Too many people have already decided for themselves and you whether grass is good or bad. What's most important is what you think. So without any preaching from this film, let's examine the facts and only the facts. There are too many false impressions and prejudices to do it any other way. Okay, then why isn't alcohol made illegal? It's a lot worse than grass. Yeah, yeah, like take juice freaks, man, they get hangover and throws to the liver. Besides, grass is in habit for like alcohol. Right. The facts are, if you drink enough, Alcohol will give you hangovers, cirrhosis of the liver, and what's more, it can even kill you. If you are a certain emotional and psychological type, you may become dependent both physically and emotionally and will join the five to six million known alcoholics in the United States. Now, what are the facts about marijuana? What do doctors and psychiatrists have to say about which is worse for you physically and emotionally, alcohol or marijuana? The facts are, at this time, there are no known damaging physical effects from the use of marijuana. But, unlike alcohol, when you take too much at one time, you don't pass out. You more than likely run the risk of bummer. Nobody can tell me what to do with my own body, what I can eat, drink, or smoke. This is a free country, and nobody has the right to take away my constitutional rights. That could be a fact if you were the only one affected by what you do. But the Constitution and the laws that came out of it were designed to protect the group from irresponsible individuals, which is why there are speeding laws, building safety laws, Pure food laws, pure drug laws, laws to protect your money, laws to protect children, laws to protect the aged, and even a law to protect you from taking your own life. Law after law after law. All of them 
hopefully designed by a democratic government to protect both the individual and the group. From aspirin to the latest vaccines, the manufacture and control of all drugs is government supervised. Would you really want it any other way? Like without government supervision? We have yet to find a serious medical consequence related to marijuana smoking. Just one more question. Somewhat to my surprise, we have not found serious health consequences in approximately $20 million of research in the last five years. In order to fight and defeat this enemy, it is necessary to wage a new all-out offensive. When I was in England, I experimented with marijuana a time or two, and I didn't like it, and didn't inhale, and never tried it again. Do you want your little kid to say, hey, Daddy, President Bush tried marijuana? I think I will. No, I don't. I wouldn't answer the marijuana question. Uh, you know, I, uh, when I was a kid, I, I, uh, uh, I inhaled uh, frequently. <laughs> that, was, uh, that, was, that was the point. It's an issue of doctors prescribing medical marijuana as a uh, treatment for glaucoma or as a cancer treatment. Uh, I think that should be appropriate because there really is no difference between that and a doctor prescribing morphine or anything else. President Obama has been very tough on uh, medical uh, marijuana dispensaries. Uh, when he was running for office, he said, oh, I'm not going to interfere with state laws. I, what I'm not going to be doing, uh, what I'm not going to be doing, is using Justice Department resources uh, to try to circumvent uh, state laws on this issue. It's very clear on the record about that, leading people to believe that he was not going to do raids of marijuana dispensaries in the states that it is legal, and it's legal in at least 16 states in the District of Columbia. Uh, instead, when he got into office, he decided, no, I'm going to do an all-out federal assault. So they did a multi-state crackdown, uh, going into about nine states. They did 170 aggressive SWAT-style raids, and he did 61 federal indictments. They are on, price, uh, on a pace to break George Bush's record for most amount of raids. Uh, incredibly tough on drugs, even in the states that they're legal in. Right. Are the DEA raids on mar medical marijuana clinics important to continue or should we stop them? No, we should stop them because they're unconstitutional in the state. You're not being compassionate by taking uh, medical marijuana from somebody who's suffering from cancer or AIDS. And uh, people should have freedom of choice. And we certainly should respect the law and the law says the states should be able to determine this. Governor Johnson, you say we should not only legalize and tax marijuana, you admit that you smoked it when it was still illegal in the, your state of New Mexico <laughs> after suffering several serious and very painful bone fractures. Question, how far would you go in legalizing drugs, sir? 
Well, f first of all, I would hope that people, when it comes to the drug issue, looking at me, would look at what I did as governor of New Mexico, which was everything was a cost-benefit analysis. So using that as a criteria, half of what we spend on law enforcement, the courts, and the prisons is drug-related. And to what end? We're arresting 1.8 million people a year in this country. We now have 2.3 million people behind bars in this country. We have the highest incarceration rate of any country in the world. I would ask people to look at this issue, see if they don't come to the same conclusion that I did, and that is, is that 90% of the drug problem is prohibition related, not use related. That's not to discount the problems with use and abuse, but that ought to be the focus. So I advocate legalizing marijuana. Control it, regulate it, tax it. It'll never be legal for kids to smoke pot or buy pot. It'll never be legal to smoke pot or do harm uh, to others. When it comes to all other drugs, I advocate harm reduction strategies, which is simply looking at the drug problem first as a health issue rather than a criminal justice issue. Mer medical, I, I think marijuana uh, should not be legal in this country. I believe it's a gateway drug. This coming November and the elections on the ballot, one of the issues is the distribution and legalization of medical marijuana. If it's going to help more than it will harm people, I don't see why we shouldn't try it out. I think with the right amount of strictures and government regulations, and if we put a good system in place, it could be a worthwhile and beneficial thing to have it be legalized. Medical is on its own a completely like different beast than even legalizing it because that's giving it to people as like a remedy for pain. If a doctor knows that it's the best solution for a problem and it's just a matter of it being legalized, I mean, people tell me all the time how it's just like a plant or whatever. Like Vicodin is allowed for, you know, dental pain and things like that. Why shouldn't marijuana be allowed? If you're already decriminalizing it, then like why would you not just give it to people that need it? Like that seems so, that seems honestly unethical, like to not provide treatment for a patient. If it helps them. I think that that's nothing that should be illegal. As regards to legalization, it's not in the president's vocabulary and it's not in mine. A local group is just days away from launching a statewide petition to legalize medical marijuana. Now, if they get enough signatures, you could soon be voting for it against, for or against it on the Arkansas Medical Marijuana Act. Very soon, you may not need a prescription to buy marijuana legally over the counter in Colorado. A new push to sell pot in stores kicked off in Oregon today, and you would not need a medical marijuana card to buy it. The push to legalize marijuana in Washington clears another hurdle. As an interested physician pharmacologist, I became very much taken by the fact that cannabis was analgesic, relieved pain. It lowered um, the likelihood of nausea and vomiting and cancer chemotherapy. It relieved muscle cramps in people with multiple sclerosis. It increased appetite. It helped AIDS patients both in gaining weight and having a better appetite and treating their nausea from antiretroviral drugs. The most dangerous thing about marijuana is to be arrested for its possession or use. That's more harmful to individuals than any pharmacological, toxicological, or other harm. We need to have the conversation in part because people need to deal with a truth, which is that marijuana is one of the most safe psychoactive components that people have ever ingested. And even though there's a moral opposition and a fear that your children are going to become monsters because they use it, the data and the discussion indicates that the compound is largely safe. And in areas in which it's dangerous, Prohibition is doing us no good. And we need to talk about the real issues of this drug and not these pretend issues which the government continues to raise and frighten people with. The incidence of Alzheimer's in individuals who were smoking marijuana in the 1960s are not getting Alzheimer's today at the rate that they should be. They're sort of standing out. There's certainly some evidence that it's helping some people treat their psychoses. Certainly epilepsy, certainly anxiety. The pharmaceutical industry is ripping us off. And I think that's a, a disgusting thing to do to the population. I would take out half of the drugs in my prescription book if I could write for medical marijuana. I took a puff for the first time in my life, and from that time on, I have felt as if I had something 
to help me I keep control. It's a whole new world. It gave me hope. People who use marijuana are not criminals. The real criminals are people who are opposing legislative and social change. We're more apt in this country to cut our teachers and our educational system than our law enforcement system for something that has been proven to not harm a single soul. It's a plant. This is a plant. This is America, a free country. We are locking up people for growing a plant. I think this would be a benefit at lowering heart attack risk, cancer risks. There's two plants that people like to smoke. The first, of course, is tobacco. It causes cancer, COPD, emphysema. The other is cannabis. It's the oldest medicine known to man. And today, it's used in the treatment of dozens of different conditions. Tobacco's legal. Marijuana's illegal. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> what the hell's wrong with freedom, then? That's what it's all about. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what it's all about, all right. But talking about it and being it, that's two different things. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they're going to talk to you and talk to you and talk to you about individual freedom. But they see a free individual, it's going to scare them. This used to be a hell of a good country. Get up, 